Uh, art it becomes so natural for me uh, to communicate. Eight months from art school, I'm in the jungles with the rock. Part of it like got rocked and, and bruised inside, uh, but it still have to grow. Previously on the season, we were in the depths of Amarillo Museum of Art's vault, learning about some of the most important and most unusual pieces in its collection. This time, we're talking with artists featured in the museum's current exhibitions on Vietnam and seeing how both art and the trauma of war bind them all. Join us as we watch Beauty Be Made From Pain in Episode 3 of The Season Amoa. I hope that they will just uh, open their eyes and able to see the world and expand uh, beyond and, and learn from different cultures. Four artists from a variety of perspectives are featured in Omoa's current exhibitions inspired by the Vietnam War and PBS's broadcast of the Ken Burns and Lynn Novick documentary on the conflict. Two are artists who were born in Vietnam and immigrated to America later. The other two are American-born, one a soldier who served at the height of the war, the other a photographer, Larry Dottilio, fascinated by what the country has become. We spoke with three of the artists, Du Chow, Antwi Nguyen, and Larry Collins, when the exhibition opened in October. I was born in Vietnam, and um, I was born in the years 1968. It was uh, very right in the years that, that I remember vividly because my uncle, I was 18, that's my mom's youngest uh, brother, mm -hmm. uh, was killed in the same year. He's just turned turn 18. Uh, life is, uh, is uh, difficult. It's not like, uh, like here in America. Um, uh, we, we have everything. Over there, uh, finding food on the table is even a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I grown up in Vietnam, and not until I got to like 22 years old, I left the country and went to, came to the state uh, to become an international student. And that was the very first time in my life that I was introduced to like Western art and um, be inspired by it and then realized that I can become an artist mm -hmm. and that would be my, um, my journey. Well, I graduated and it seemed like within hours I got a draft notice and I'm like, what? <laughs> and I, I was very naive. I, I didn't know anything about the war. I didn't even know where Vietnam was. And I know it sounds odd, but <clears throat> it's the truth. Eight months from art school, I'm in the jungles with the rifle. Du Chao came to America as a teenager and was placed in art classes where he didn't have to communicate in a language he struggled to understand. Uh, art it becomes so natural for me uh, to communicate. Uh, it's much more challenging like writing language and until today is still not easy. But, but I'm getting through over the years um, uh, uh, and so, so making art I can communicate through my work. Antwi Nguyen came to America as an adult and found that her childhood in post-war Vietnam still echoes in her work. So the boats, growing up, we didn't have a lot. Like right after the war ended, we didn't have a lot. So we have to um, um, make, make things up um, to, to play with. And a lot of the time we make like paper boats, um, paper crane, but bow is somehow like very easy for us to make, so I make a lot of bow growing up and just drag them along the street. Um, and a lot of the time now that I'm looking back, the boat somehow become a surrogate of myself or a surrogate of another friend that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And the boat was my friend at that time and many other objects that I just find around the house. Um, and as I, I looking for something that um, I can work with in this body of work, the boat journey series, I thought, of, okay, it's the boat, because it's a journey that we all kind of go through, and um, how can I create that tension again, the impossibility of assimilated into a new lane, or going back to your own lane, and you still don't belong there. Mm -hmm. um, and the boat is somehow, is, um, the boat is somehow helped me to carry on into that space in between, yet, I can never really get to that place. I get to that place, but I never 
belong or settle to that place. Larry Collins arrived in Vietnam at the height of the conflict. After losing many of his fellow soldiers, several of whom he captured in photos, Collins still finds himself haunted by the war, a feeling reflected in his art to this day. I did what most Vietnam vets did, which is you take your pictures, your negatives, your slides, you put them in a box and forget about it because nobody wants to talk about it, nobody wants to see these. And I literally had them in a box uh, for 30 years. Never thought about them as art at all. About eight years ago, I started painting about Vietnam again. <clears throat> and these are not all of them, but most of them. I can't remember why I started. Yeah, I know why I started. Because I finally started opening up that, taking the lid off of that experience. You know, I remember I shut, the, shut it down. And I had gone to a therapist because I was just having, I don't know, some troubles. And he, start, he asked me one day, tell me about Vietnam. And I'm like, why? Ancient history. And I started telling him about the day that I left the field. He wants to jump. you know, without saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. And I started to cry. He said, that's okay, we, we'll come back to this, but we have to talk about this. So it was that day that I think, and also 9-11 when that happened, it did something inside. It, it was like, oh my God, we're back at war. That feeling like I'm in a war again came over me. A horrible thing. But I think it affected a lot of combat veterans that way. The scars of war come out in different ways in each of their works. Like this big one back here. It's called 1968. And I wanted to express what it felt like to be in a place that was so dangerous, everything about it was dangerous. And you were on the verge of being killed at all times and there, there was no escape. It's, it's the sea, you know, but it, if you look closely, it looks very threatening. Yeah. You know, the ends of the waves are like scorpion tails or, or they, they're like teeth, you know. There's no... It's not a fun picture, not a couch picture. And uh, the porcelain soldiers, as you look close, it's very difficult for me to make each little piece without breaking the arm, or breaking the le legs, uh, or all this little piece. So when I make this piece, I decided, you know, I remember the memories of, you know, you see so many soldiers on the street being amputated. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like you see people uh, broken arms, legs. So, so, so that, that piece, I kind of like to uh, create a memory that is so uh, traumatic into something very calm and peaceful and, and, and also inviting. And so for a younger uh, audience, they look at the piece, it's very happy. They don't need to know the trauma behind the piece. The way we, we've been trained or we've been kind of educated to talk to the world is a very different way than we experience as a human, like how is impact on us like internally, not just you lose your arm, you lose your leg, but what kind of loss that, that, that you, yeah, what, what kind of loss that you lost forever that you don't have. And I think of it as a tree. You have fruit, it's growing it out, it have leaves and it's grow big and so forth. But the fruit, sometimes it's not sweet. And if we, if I dissect it, look down into the root, like if I can open the earth, and look down on the roots. It's still like rotten in there. Like a part of the root is not healthily grow to extract all the nutrients <clears throat> from the ground, but rather like a part of it like got rotten and bruised inside. 
Uh, but it still have to grow in order to kind of fight back with the environment outside to produce fruit. And, um, and that is like part of it I explore in my work, not, ex not physically, like with a tree and the root drawn in, but there's something about that, that part of the beauty, um, but the sadness, mm -hmm. the, the happy and the sadness, the beauty and the ugly. There's something that kind of dual um, intensity, like that tension um, is always exhibit like in my work, mm -hmm. showcase in my work. The unusual experience of Vietnamese refugees and immigrants exhibiting alongside an American veteran of the war is inspiring to all three, a feeling they hope is shared with the audience. I think it's good for us to unite, looking at other people's uh, life, looking at other people's experience in order to enrich our own and find that kind of empathy so we can live together and just investigate and delve into our self-being of living and make the life like richer and beautiful. But yet, at the same time, in order to see the beautiful, you have to see the ugliness of it. Mm -hmm. But we should just learn from other part that already happened so that we don't make the same mistake because then another group of people have to go through this pain again. And it's just too much. Yeah. That's what I hope people get, is that there's a common ground Panhandle PBS and The Season will follow Amarillo Museum of Art throughout 2017 and 18. Up next, we'll learn about the origins of the museum's extensive price collection of Asian art. To view the artist's complete interviews, visit panhandlepbs.org slash The Season.